With me now is John Chris Hawking, noted scribe of sword and sorcery. G -g -g greetings, peerless skull. Yes, greetings unto you. Tell me, what draws you to the writing of the greatest genre? Um, I, I, write, I write sword and sorcery, I think, primarily because I admire the genre and I've been so fond of so many of the authors that have written it. I've been so fond of them and so, I don't know, I'm involved and in love with the genre my entire life that I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to make my own contribution to it. I, I wanted to see if I could write it as well as just simply read it. And the fact that I published some stories in the genre you know, is one of the most rewarding things that I've, I've ever done, to be honest with you. What are these stories? Uh, Describe them for our viewers. I, I, I wrote a, a pastiche of Robert E. Howard's uh, Conan the Sumerian, um, Conan the Emerald Lotus. I've written a chain of short stories uh, about uh, sword and sorcery character called the, called the Archivist and his friend Lucella, a uh, lady soldier. Those have appeared in the Black Gate, the Flashing Swords e-zine, um, an issue of Skelos, a uh, weird book. Um, but for, for, for your magazine, Mighty Skull, Tales from the Magician Skull, I've, I've written a chain of stories about uh, Ben Hus, uh, a young man uh, in over his head uh, working for uh, the royalty in a, in a kingdom roiled by treachery and sorcery. Tell us more about Ben Hus and his world. Um, ben Hus uh, finds himself, uh, I don't know, in, like I said, far over his head. He, he's, he's a young man who hasn't had a whole lot of breaks and he finds himself thrust into a world uh, where ro royalty has supreme power, where sorcery and treachery are, are abound. And uh, he's doing his best to survive. He's a, um, a character inspired as much by, you know, hard-boiled crime fiction as, as, as sword and sorcery. I wanted to create a kind of ambivalent character you couldn't immediately understand or maybe completely sympathize with right out the door. And then watch him as he struggled and far over his head, sometimes using some um, uh, not necessarily savory means to advance his case. He, uh, he, he survives. Uh, and I'm hoping that, uh, that, that readers, as, if, especially those that follow along, find themselves uh, rooting for the guy more than they might initially expect. I see. I see. I am aware that there is some concern that he is not a nice fellow, which amuses me. <laughs> That, uh, to be honest, Mighty Skull, that amuses me a little bit as well. Now, on, on one hand, okay, he is an ambivalent character, and not everything he does is, is worthy of, of the standard person's moral approval. He's, he's, he can be a little shady in order to get what he needs, in order to get by, in order to survive. But if you How think is about that sword... different? How is that different from other sword and sorcery yeah, characters? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's yeah, Mighty Skull, that puzzles me as well. If you stop and think about it, Conan the, uh, the Sumerian is not necessarily a the most savory character at all points in his life. Uh, I imagine that the, the merchants uh, on, on shipboard who are watching Conan and Blit come down upon their ship to plunder it didn't regard him as a pleasant character. Um, Carla Wagner's Cain is not, uh, not the, the most pleasant and moral character. And let's, uh, Michael Moorcock's Elric is hardly the kind of fellow you'd like to take to lunch. None of these characters are, are, are sweethearts. Uh, so yes. I don't think the genre is necessarily packed full of really wonderful, cuddly guys. Um, hmm. I don't know. Not, not to put Bennis in the company of those exalted heroes, but you know, the genre doesn't really lean towards really positive sweetheart protagonists. Yes, yes. Is there more that you wish to say about the setting of Ben Hus and his world? Well, I could go on about that for a long time. I, I, I'd rather not go on at length. But my initial thought was uh, that the rough basics of it was what if Rome had colonized the Pacific Northwest long it had, like imperial rome at its absolute most militaristic and intense and then was cut off isolated there um that's that's not what it is but that was sort of the basic idea that got me to where i'm at right now um it's uh it's far away from from that it isn't historical fantasy at all but that was the basic inspiration of it so i have uh, uh you know a sort of almost an, almost a native american culture overlaid with sort of a militaristic you know almost roman style a monarchy and uh, the, the two different types of magic from both different types of civilizations. And uh, I'm having some fun with that. Yes, it is clear from your writing. Tell us, how did you choose the name of Ben Hus? Um, okay, well, this is sort of a secret, but yeah, actually, uh, I'll, I'll spill it right now. Um, the name Ben Hus. No <laughs> I, I, would, I would keep no secrets from you, Mighty Skull, none at all. Yes. Uh, 
the, uh, the, the name of Ben-Has is actually a contraction of the author's name of Ben Haas, um, Benjamin Leopold Haas, who was a pulp writer of the uh, 1970s primarily, who wrote, who wrote a chain of, uh, of Westerns, um, thrillers, and a handful of sword and sorcery stories under a variety of, uh, of, of pen names, uh, John Benteen, uh, John Mead, uh, ben Elliott, a whole variety of them. He wrote the, the Fargo series and, and the Sundance series, both the sort of proto-Westerns. Um, the, the, he was a tremendously dependable author. Um, virtually anything the guy wrote is compelling, fast, um, and rewarding to read. And I, I remember thinking that if, if I had this guy's skills, if I could write like this, I, I, it would be a better world for me. So I, you know, in thinking of trying to come up with a name, I contracted Ben Haas into Ben Haas. So I recommend this man's work to all viewers. <laughs> As do I. Yes. yes. So tell me, what is the greatest of all breakfast foods? Um, uh, uh, boy, that's a, that, that's a, that's a tough call, sir. Um, uh, Cascadian Farms, uh, hearty morning fiber. It, 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 it tastes good and it has a high fiber content. Hmm. Hmm. This question wearies me. Why should people support my glorious magazine? Oh, there's any number of reasons why your magazine should be supported. Almighty oh, skull, oh, peerless skull. Um, first and foremost, the fact that it is it, it is a exquisite venue for the genre of sword and sorcery. It's a it's a beautiful magazine. Um, it, it it may be hard for some readers to realize who perhaps aren't as, haven't been looking at sword and sorcery and reading it as long as, as, as I have, but there didn't used to be anything remotely like this in the genre. This is a glossy magazine. It's beautiful. The paper is beautiful. It has wonderful illustrations and fine covers and the contents are, are full of great rip roaring reads. There wasn't anything like this, not very long ago. Um, if the closest you could get to this would have been something run off on a copying machine 10, 20 years back that this, it's, uh, uh, it's unheralded to see a magazine quite this beautiful, focused entirely on sword and sorcery. And I'm delighted and honored to be a part of it. Yes, as well you should be. Had I a heart remaining, it would have been stirred by your words. Well, that is enough for our interview today. Go forth, obtain your daily gruel so that you may begin to write more for me. I'll do, I'll, I'll do my very best, Skull, I promise you. This interview is at an end.